Hello, ladies and gents. Well, um, it's past 2 a.m. because I'm mildly insane. Um, but uh, I wanted to share this uh, solution that I came up with for a problem that I've been kind of poking at all day. I've been thinking about it for uh, about a week now. I saw a post on the Unreal forums that uh, asked the question, I have a lot of texture, I want to make it flow downhill. And this can also be used for things like, you know, uh, you have water at the edge of um, the a terrain and you wanted, you know, the flow of, uh, say, like a frothy texture or something like that, just kind of moving around. So um, I'm looking at this, this general idea of how can I make um, movement in the direction of the flow. Now, generating like a flow texture where you have, you know, the, the path kind of flowing downwards, um, this is essentially a mask. This, this isn't uh, defining direction necessarily, it's just defining a mask for where flow will happen. And this is easy enough to do in a variety of different uh, uh, of tools, from Gaia to World Machine. So Gaia has this one right here that we can use, and uh, this will provide us a mask for where, say, that lava would be occurring. And we can use this to mask that off. But the other aspect that we need to deal with is the actual texture of the lava and it moving in the direction of that flow. Now, um, in terms of UV manipulation on most tools, you have a U, uh, U across and a V direction, and that will lay it out on the surface. And in this particular case here, that would just, you know, make it all flow in this direction or all flow in that direction. And that's obviously not useful because we want it to flow down the mountain. So that U and V direction has to come from the height information. Now the V direction is pretty straightforward. It is the height map itself. The height map itself works as a V direction, but then how do we generate the U? So this was the issue that I presented myself with and I had to come up with some kind of solution. And um, I researched a whole bunch of different methods um, for things like, you know, Sobel filters and um, just random stuff, seeing if there was some straightforward, simple mathematical solution. And at first there wasn't. Um, a lot of people using Sobel was looking for edge data, was just trying to find the edges. So um, I finally keyed into one simple idea, and that was actually making use of the normal from height node directly inside of UE4 which um, the node itself, it just goes ahead and it does an offset of the textures and in the, you know, the up and down, left and right, and kind of compares them in order to get gradients left and right and up and down, and then it fills in like the blue um, itself. So, it's a great one for that. Now, this little contribution here, uh, the Dither Temporal AA, um, it's a little bit more costly than necessarily I, I should probably need. And if I had maybe a higher bit depth uh, rather than 8 bit, um, I might not have needed it at all. But adding a small amount of this right now because um, in the dark values, uh, I got a little bit of noise. So I was trying to get around that. Anyways, you can see the general contributions that you should put in. Um, I don't think I actually need this one because I think it has its own, but anyways, I was just adding the, the specific requirements. And uh, once we get the results out, we uh, component mask the R and the G um, so that we can do an arctangent 2 on them. 
in doing that, that gives us um, the red channel that we want, which we're going to mask out, and we can do a little bit of additional math. So that math is um, 2 times pi, and we're um, adding that together, and we're also dividing them, and we're dividing 2 times pi against like the addition of those, and then we're doing this if comparison. And that gives us our wraparound UVs. So the wraparound U and the V component, which came from the height map, as I said, which could be your mountain. So it would be your mountain here as a texture object, and then your mountain here as a regular texture, texture sample, which you're just going to pull out any channel because they're all the same. It doesn't really matter. matter. <clears throat> Sorry. And that would go into your V and then into your U channel, and that's your UVs for that. So now you have UVs for the flow based on the height of your mountain and wrap around for your mountain or any shape that you want. And I just used this because it was so complex that if it worked on this, guaranteed it's going to work on a mountain. Um, so this is just something quickly put together with Photoshop with like a just soft brush and just kind of slamming it down on the, the surface just to get something weird. Um, and then testing it with a panner here, uh, slow movement in one direction, which basically would be the flowing downwards uh, of that texture. And if I want that texture to um, tile, I would simply need to multiply. So we can multiply this texture just by going in, putting like a multiply node and a two vector and this would get tiling in u tiling in v and we would multiply these two values which would be fairly straightforward you can control the tiling in the u and the v direction and you could plug that into the panner instead and that will tile the texture not just move it and uh, you can ignore this stuff here this is me just playing around with you know making the colors instead of black and white uh, but this would be your lava texture, whatever your lava texture is. And then there's other things that you could use to control um, the edges if you wanted to darken them and whatnot by, uh, again, from these kind of masks. So you could use this to uh, define uh, the blend between, say, uh, like a um, cold lava uh, versus a hot lava, which would be your flowing element. So say the uh, cold lava would be flowing much slower, where your, your hot lava would be traveling a little bit faster. And this would define sort of the lerp between them. And you could do another version of this where then it would uh, mask to the actual uh, mountain texture, whatever it is. Um, so those are pretty straightforward to, to work out, and I'm pretty sure anybody uh, watching this could figure that out on their own. But ultimately, this becomes you know a mask and variations variations on this for the the masking purposes. So hopefully, this has given you a little bit of insight. Um, at the very least, it gives you a general formula for being able to create this. The ideal situation, of course would be for this to be a 2D map rather than being calculated, which is, you know, it's got a certain level of uh, mathematical complexity to this that it's it's going through in order to generate this. Uh, I believe after it's compiled, it might be fast enough uh, to do the job, but if not, um, maybe there might be a solution in using something like render targets in order to, uh, to save you some of the grief. Um, uh, or putting something like this together in, say, Substance Designer as a, a method of quickly generating your wraparound, and then you just take the two textures out of Substance and, uh, and go from there. So anyways, there's the math, there's the formula. Uh, hopefully you find it useful, and uh, I think I'm going to go pass out now because it's, it's very early in the morning. Okay, have fun.